I hadn't heard from you in a while, and then you popped up on Kendrick's first album, mm -hmm. which I thought was was big, and it works so well. The way the way that song is put together, and the way you do the chorus, is just so so ill. So, can you talk about what led up to that actually happening? Um. I'd been coaching, you know, football, my son and stuff. And then uh, actually my son's dark, my son's sister hit me up and said that she knew them. And they basically reached out to her and asked her, could she contact me? So she called me and said, yeah, this guy named Kendrick wants to do a song with you. And I was like, okay. so. I looked him up, that's when I found out, you know, he was messing with Dre and they was getting ready to put the record out and whatever, so I was like, yeah, no problem. But then sometimes, you know, you get, I get that all the time. Niggas wanna do songs, niggas wanna go on the road, niggas wanna do this, and you look up a year later, you ain't heard from a motherfucker, so I'm used to that. So when he said it, I was like, yeah, it's cool, holler at me. So I had totally forgot about it, and like two, three weeks later, he hit me and told me to come to the studio. So I went to the studio and as soon as I got there, he sat me down, told me the direction of what he wanted to do, how he wanted the song to go, what he wanted the hook to say, what he wanted me to say on the hook, the streets he wanted me to name, all that. So for a cat who was, you know, just getting into this shit, he was already there with it. like. He knew how he wanted his songs laid out, the direction of it, the music, you know, all that. The breakdown from going from Mad City to that song, and it, it, it was all laid out in his vision. So I thought that was pretty big for a cat like that who people were just now starting to gravitate to from the Section 80 record he had did mm -hmm. to hooking up with Dre. And now I, I just thought it was, it was simple for me to just go in because first of all, the bird in the hand beat was, you know, that's just fucking, you fucked that up anyway. So when I heard the beat and I'm like, oh, that's that old school cube right there. So it was just natural shit. And then he wanted me to talk about shit that I had already been talking about for years. So it was, it was, it was simple to me. I think I know. I know people when they hear songs, they think it's like kind of hard to come up with the concepts and and whatever. But when shit is on, it's just on, and that's just how I work. Okay, so, because, you know, everyone talks about Section 80 these days, but when it came out, I, I never heard of it. I, I didn't, didn't either. Yeah, I, I didn't know about Kendrick until... And I can be honest City. with you, I didn't even know about Kendrick. Yeah. I had no idea who Kendrick Lamar was until he called me. And that's when I started doing my research. And then I was like, he from Compton, they just signed the Aftermath with Dre through Top Dog, and then, you know, so I... I was I was I was in the dark just like a lot of cats was. And then when he was, you know, a lot of cats were like, you know, he was on he was sort of conscious with it. He wasn't like gangster. Right. You yeah. know, but he still had the subjects of knowing how to put that out there about growing up in the hood and seeing my cousins or my brother shot and the police and going to, but then he could still take you th down another road of consciousness. So I, I I just thought he was a I thought he was good for hip hop and as far as Compton is concerned, I don't know, anybody represent the city is good to me. Okay, so you came in and he already had the chorus pretty much. Yeah, all that shit laid out. Oh, so you pretty much just did the I vocals. I went and wrote my verse and the chorus and all that, the Rosecrans, Alondra, Bullets, all he had all that shit laid out. Crazy. All that he he like. I want you to say Alondra. I want you to say Cluckheads on the block. I want you to say you know. And then I ad lib some shit on my own. But he basically, this is what I want you to say on it. And to me, that was cool because I didn't have to come up with shit. Right. Like fuck it, you already know what you want me to say. <laughs> fuck, I'm cool with that. Now I ain't got to write. Now I ain't got to think about a hook or a chorus or nothing because I don't like doing that shit anyway. Okay. Just let me write this, write my verse and get the fuck on out. So you put it together. When it was done, were you like, oh, this is about to be some shit? Man, I, I didn't look at it like that because I, 
I look at shit like you do it, you do it. Now, it, I looked at it like, okay, he got Dre behind him, so it's gonna be a good record. But when I do songs, I look at them like, we too, we too grimy and hard for motherfuckers to just, it's gonna be one of those songs, you know what I'm saying? Like when I did Straight Up Menace, I wasn't looking for it to be no song like that. It was just a song I wrote because I'm talking about shit that regularly goes on. And then with being in the movie, so I didn't look at it like, oh man, Mad City is finna be large and motherfuckers is finna be, you know, and you look up five years later, it's gonna have 60 million thousand views and shit and like that. So. I, 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 don't, I don't look at shit like that when I do it. I put out music to, to a please myself and niggas that I know like this type of shit. Do I go, oh man, this is gonna be an international fucking Christina Aguilera, Lady Gaga ass type of shit? No, I don't look at songs like that. I put them out there, if they go, good. If they just a please the niggas that I know, then I'm good on that too. I don't look for that super stardom type of shit. Sure. But when the album came out and it started to go kind of super stardom, how'd you feel being part of it? Shit, sure. I'm, 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 man, I'm, I'm a humble nigga, I'm simple. I didn't go, oh man, my fucking Kendrick record is, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm simple, man, fuck it. I'm like, oh yeah, it's banging. <laughs> Good looking, my nigga, cool. good looking. Yeah. People are like, oh, no, nigga, that shit is fire. And I'm still like, good looking. You know, right. I, I'm, I don't get excited like that, man. Shit, I've been doing this shit for so fucking long. It's like waking up, putting on my motherfucking uniform, punching the clock, you go to work. You know what I'm saying? So I just try to do the best at my job. Fuck it. Feel you. Um, now, you were supposed to be in the Kendrick All Right video? Yes. <laughs> what happened there? I had a show out of town and um, they called me all weekend to come do it. They wanted me to be in the part where him and, what's his name, Tony Cruz is in the car and they doing the menace scene and then they go inside the club and they do all. They wanted me to do that and I tried to make it, but I had a show Friday night. They wanted to shoot the video that Friday, but I had a show. So they pushed it back till Saturday, but by the time I landed, I was head coach of a football team. My game was starting, mm. so I, it, it didn't happen. I wanted to do it bad, but I couldn't let down the kids. You know, I yeah. couldn't see myself going to be in a video and then have my squad out there with the assistant. Like, I didn't sign up for that. When I signed up the head coach, it was it was the whole way. So no disrespect to my nigga. I called him. I told him, you know, I appreciate it. Thank you for considering me, but I couldn't make it because of the boys. So that's dope, man. That's a great reason to miss it. Miss that, like that's it. Any other reason, I'd have yeah. been there. But and then especially my son plays too, and I'm right. the coach. So <laughs> the kids is like, you know, they probably would have told me too. Fuck that, coach. Go to the video, but. I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I make it a commitment to them, and that's why I try to teach my son. When you start something, you finish it. You know what I'm saying? This kind of reminds me a little bit of this other story that just broke uh, earlier this month. Um, the golfer Phil Mickelson, mm. one of the top, one of the top yeah, golfers. I, I heard of Phil Mickelson. He missed the U.S. Open because of his daughter's high school graduation. I mean, I can understand that. I mean. In some ways I can, some ways I can't. You know, you don't want to miss that paycheck because that's for the kids too and whatever. But it's just sometimes, this is a saying I tell people, all money ain't good money, mm -hmm. okay? And what I mean by that is, yeah, money is good. But at the price of what you got to sacrifice to get that dollar, sometimes you got to bypass that. And I look at it like, when I first started rapping and touring, I didn't pass up shit. So I didn't see my daughters do nothing mm. because every fucking weekend I didn't give a shit. Money, show, let's go. Overseas, let's go. It wasn't like, oh, my daughter got a cheerlead match this weekend. Fuck that. We got to go get paid. The more I did that and they grew up, it's like you want to have that. 
with your kids in any type of fucking business you do. So I just started learning how to just sacrifice the shit. Fuck it. Yeah, I want to go make that money, but then my son throw a fucking 30 yard pa touchdown pass and I don't get to see that. I'm going to be fucking disappointed too. So I just had to start balancing shit. Okay, I can come do the show if you can get me back the next day by 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. Then I come. If you can't, then we got to push it. So I just learned to start sacrifice because sometimes you got to do that. You know? I feel you. You know, Kendra's, you know, just dropped that damn album, which was right. a beast. A beast. Um, you know, people are talking about whether they like that better than Good Kid, Mad City. I think it's a bit of a toss up. I definitely like it better than, you know, uh, Pimp a Butterfly. Pimp a Butterfly. Which I thought which, went. Well, yeah. I, I, like, uh, I, like, I like Mad City more than the Pimp a Butterfly. Yeah. I like damn more than to pimp a butterfly. Yeah. But I liked it pimp a butterfly. It had certain songs. Like All Right was good. Um Yeah. It was a few it uh, was some, uh Black of the Berry was good. That yeah. was good. Yeah. It was another one on there too. Uh, what's the other one he did? About the pussy. What's the name of that one? God damn, what is the name of that song? These Walls? Yes. These, These walls? walls is pretty good too. Yeah. But I I think uh, damn it just I think that kind of picked up real hard because of what was going on in the music business. You know what I'm saying? And for him to come back, for him to be one of those forefront big cats right now, and for him to tell people like you know it ain't all about the big cars and the jewelry and the money and the bitches with the fake this and fake that and everybody trying to be somebody else. I think that kind of resonated home with a lot of people who are normal motherfuckers. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I think that's why the success of Damn did better than Pimp or Butterfly because even though they all good, and like I said, my nigga doing numbers like it ain't shit. So right, but. It's just certain songs resonate with certain groups of type of people. And when you can grab those normal motherfuckers, then you winning. You yep. know what I'm saying? 